My name is Matt Clemens. I'm the Assistant Dean of Admissions. Fuqua actually has 10 total programs, and I am responsible for eight of those programs. Uh, the easiest way to say it is what I'm not responsible for. So I am not responsible for the full-time MBA. Everything else I am responsible for. We have one year specialized master's programs. We have executive MBA programs and we have online programs. And I am responsible for all three of those categories. So my name is Rebecca Pino. I am head of admissions uh, for EU Business School. I am based on our Geneva campus. And in this capacity, I'm the one who is collecting the files of students for admissions review, um, students that are eligible, that meet our criteria. I'm passing along to our admissions committee uh, for final review and approval or not. Uh, in this capacity, I am also welcoming students to campus. I like to think of myself as the welcome wagon. I arrange orientation activities. I assist students in applying for and obtaining their visa if they're an international student. Um, I'm also helping in the accommodation search. So just general kind of welcoming to Geneva and getting students settled in to start their studies at EU Business School. At the Fuqua School of Business, we have two one-year specialized master's programs. They are both described as pre-professional programs, meaning that you do not have to have previous experience to enroll in the programs. I would say the most experience people have coming into the programs is about two years of experience, but the majority of the individuals entering the programs have no work experience. They've gone to college, they've had some internships and some work experience, but they've never worked full time. And there's two flavors of them, so to speak. There's an MMS in Business Analytics, Master of Management Studies. And then there's, uh, or sorry, Foundations of Business. And then there's an MQM BA, Master of Quantitative Management in Business Analytics. So two different 10 month programs. Master's programs at EU Business School are actually relatively new. Uh, we've been running them on our Barcelona campus since about 2018 and since 2019 in Geneva. Uh, what's great about our master's programs is they're actually designed, targeted specifically at students who are coming with little to no work experience. Um, this is a professional degree. It's one year in length. Um, classes are offered in the evenings. We offer specializations ranging from a master in management, marketing, um, to some of the more, let's say, specialized ones. We have data analysis and transformation. Um, we also look at digital business as well. Um, so we're offering over 10 different specializations at the master level. Um, it's a very exciting program. Like I said, again, targeted a bit more to the professional crowd. Uh, those students that are really looking for technical skills in the business world um, and who might lack some work experience, uh, this way they can get that kind of hands-on experience we offer in our experiential learning at EU Business School. It's kind of a philosophical question more than anything else. There, there gets to be a point where a full-time MBA may make more sense. If, if you have worked three, four, five years, you're in a much different place than you are if you haven't worked or maybe you've only worked for a year or two. And so a lot of it has to do with the makeup of the cohort. So if you had somebody coming into the program who had five years of experience, they would be in a very different place than the rest of the individuals in the cohort. And the way that the one-year specialized master's programs are designed, you obviously have a relationship that you develop with the faculty in the program. We also structure it so that you are able to develop a relationship, a mentorship with a full-time MBA student. So you as a one-year specialized master's student, you have the faculty, you're going to have an MBA student that is going to be mentoring you as well. And then you're going to have your professional development experiences 
on top of that. So your internships, your capstone projects, special projects with companies that our faculty will set up. And it's it's kind of the mindset that you're in. You're, you're really, really early. You're, you're just learning about what's out there, uh, just sinking your teeth into things, as opposed to someone who has been out there a while and has really maybe been battle tested and they know what they really want from a full-time MBA program. And the specialized master's programs are more foundational where we're giving you the building blocks to put you in a, a place to succeed. And the business world has really changed over the past couple of decades. Uh, it used to be that things were uh, pretty structural. You would get a job with a company, they would invest in you, you would stay with that company for a long time, maybe they would invest in paying for your MBA. And now things are happening so fast, everything is data driven, companies are pivoting, and they're really looking for people who have a mindset and a skill set to be able to adapt and move quickly from one project to another. And the kind of things you learn in a one year specialized master's programs are more of more of that mindset. How, how do you have that knowledge? And from your undergrad degree, combine it with the mentorship that you're getting from the faculty and the second year MBA students. Combine it with particular skills in that program so that when you're going into a company, that company knows that you, you are already at a place where you're going to be able to succeed rather than having to take a year or a two, maybe even three years to develop you within a system. They want you ready to go, uh, you know, not from day one. Obviously, there's going to be some onboarding that happens. But I think the mentality that companies have now is a bit different than it used to be, where the timeline that they would have for an individual to get up to speed was more lengthy, whereas now that's really been truncated and shortened. And the one-year specialized master's programs are meant to prepare people to deal with that rapid timeline where a company really wants you to onboard quickly. That's kind of the philosophy of the programs. We actually currently only require work experience for our MBA. So that would be our master in business administration. And to be honest with you, that's really a question of needing that program is a little bit more academically intensive, I would say. Um, so there we're actually looking for students who bring at least two years of work experience. They've already got a little bit of that office professionalism. They have a little bit more of a background context because some of the courses that they take at the MBA level are going to be a little bit more of a deep dive, are going to be a little bit more intense. Uh, so we really are looking for students to bring that background. Not a lot, just two years of experience, but they've already dipped their toes in the water. Um, whereas again, for the master program, uh, we're actually eager to welcome students that, that don't have work experience. Um, again, this is because we really welcome what our students can bring to the table uh, for the master program. And a lot of times, we want to teach students those technical skills, not to sound too um, you know, self-imposing, but for the master program, we're actually teaching a lot of the technical side, particularly in digital business, particularly in data analysis and search engine optimization. So we actually want to take advantage of a student who maybe doesn't have that work experience and kind of fresh and ready to learn those technical skills that we want to teach them. I think one benefit is that you really come to the, you you approach the subject maybe with a bit more of an open mind. Um, our, one of our taglines at EU Business School is that we say we are trying to prepare you for a job that might not even exist right now. In our changing world, the everything, we, we have jobs now, you know, think about social media in influencers. If you had said that to me even five, seven years ago, I would have looked at you like you were crazy. And so one thing that's great about students with no previous work experience is that they're, they're really, they're fresh. They're kind of coming to the table with no preconceived ideas about what a job might be. And that's amazing for us because we're really looking to adapt to the times and to be able to provide students with the skills and experience they need in the classroom to succeed in a job market that, let's be honest, we don't necessarily know what is it's going to look like even five years from now. Uh, so, I, so I think that's a great advantage, actually. 
So it's definitely through the application process. We have, like many business schools, the, the uh, online application, you write your essays, you get letters of recommendation, you submit your transcripts, all the things that applicants are familiar with. And then we also conduct an interview as a part of the process. And we have no issue with people who either don't have a, an undergraduate background in business or economics or, or finance, for example, or maybe someone who's gone out and worked for a year or two who doesn't have a traditional business background. The programs are designed to take people in both categories. If you have a business background, great. Uh, you're probably going to, your learning curve is going to be a little less steep. But part of the magic of some of these programs as well is bringing together people with different backgrounds and putting them into groups because we are a group and team oriented program and getting those different perspectives on things. So if you have somebody coming from a traditional liberal arts background who is very much trained in, in critical thinking and analysis and, and asking those deep probing questions and you're pairing them with a computer science major, that's golden because you're going to be able to get that perspective. How do other people think? How can I put myself in a place to understand those people? Because so much of what is in, in business is communications. And what we, we hear a lot from our alumni, we have a business communications uh, a philosophy course in, in the program. And the alumni will often talk about that ability to communicate across disciplines uh, being interdisciplinary in your thinking and be able to take different parts and piece them together is one of the most important things. If it's not the finance or accounting or, or data science skills that, that can be taught and can be learned and you could be on the job in a week, you could do a really intensive crash course and what that company is doing. But the ability to really be a translator is, is how they put it. How do you translate information between people, between groups, if there's multiple projects going on, how do you get different people to realize the value of what they're doing as it crosses the streams or as it comes together? And so that is very important for us. So we would not want a program where everyone is coming in with a business undergrad major or everyone has worked in consulting. Um, it's not homogenous like that where we're looking for people with a singular background and having kind of that group think, we all think the same. It's really seeking the value in how people think differently and how do you achieve an outcome that's greater than it would be if you had all these data scientists in a room trying to figure out, okay, how do we uh, truncate the sales timeline? How do we get from six months to two months to get a buyer to make a decision? You have someone who has a psychology background and, and maybe you have somebody again that more liberal arts background and then a data scientist and you start to have that uh, interdisciplinary conversation about okay how do we get how do we help a business to make a, a strategy or develop a strategy that's going to help us achieve the the result that, that we're looking for which in, in this instance was trying to, to make a sale sooner so that is part of what we value in the program is bringing together people with different business experience, different academic backgrounds. And the one thing I will say, the MQM program in business analytics, we do expect some measure of quantitative ability. Uh, we like to see people who've taken calculus and statistics, uh, for example, because that program is much more quantitative centric. It's in the name, Master of Quantitative Management. Um, the MMS program, FOB, Foundations of Business, will have quantitative elements to it, but the dominant, uh, dominant uh, pathway through that program is not numerical. It's not using data to make decisions. Uh, FOB is more that business communication, negotiation, management, strategy. That's the bulk of the program. And then you flip flop it for the MQM where you're going to have the management, the negotiation and whatnot, but it's not going to be the bulk of the program. The bulk of the program is going to be data visualization, machine learning, data science, those sorts of things that help companies make sense of this vast amount of data that they now have access to.
for our master in business administration and all the various majors we offer is really more related to business, I would say. Um, that's not to say that we don't welcome students that are doing change of career paths. Uh, we recently had a medical doctor who actually completed our MBA uh, with a major in human resource management uh, because he was a doctor coming from the United States. He was overwhelmed by paperwork and procedure and he really felt that having that MBA with that focus would allow him to better navigate that system. So in his case, he didn't really have business experience, uh, but we did accept him into the program because we felt that his experience came from a different background. That being said, wherever possible, we are looking for students who already have some experience um, in their area of, of choice. Um, but again, not 100% obligatory. Like I said, you know, when we have cases like that, we're really eager to welcome students with diverse backgrounds because we at EU Business School feel that business overlaps with everything, with every subject. You know, it's like the ultimate Venn diagram. So we're not going to necessarily um, discriminate against a student coming from a different background. It's really more for their own comfort and level with the, the, the academic level of the program to make sure that they feel that they have the experience that helps them succeed in the courses. While I did mention that our master program, depending on the specialization, again, is a bit more geared to, let's say, our, our, our greener population, um, we do welcome students with work experience and sometimes significant levels. One thing we're able to do in our master's programs is that we're able to sometimes open up different sections of programs. This can allow us to create groups. Maybe if we have several students who have more significant work experience, we might group those students together in their classes. That is something we've done in the past as well. But we also, we're an international school. We welcome students from all over the world with all different backgrounds, cultures. We also enjoy a mix in the classroom. So we definitely don't overlook a student who has significant work experience. In fact, we, we'd welcome that student um, because they can, they can contribute to the class. So we have participatory classes, we're doing business simulations, and those students can definitely bring something additional to the table. What will make a successful applicant or a successful student in the program is really what will make a successful uh, alum getting a job. And so someone who's able to communicate well, somebody who has some foundational knowledge, somebody who has a a sense of where they want to go. And in one of these programs, I guess one of the philosophical things again is you could graduate from college, go out into the job market and, and flail around for a few years and, and really not find your place and get frustrated because you're like, okay, I'm, I'm out here. Maybe I'm, I'm earning decent money, but I really am not excited about what I'm doing. And you're kind of going from maybe one thing to the next. What we're really looking for are people who have a, a strong sense of self-motivation. And there are people who come into the program who know exactly what they want. They say, I want to work for TikTok. I, I want to get it into this world of social media. And then whatever the next, next TikTok is going to be, this is what I get excited about, is how do we create content, use data to feed content to people to entertain them or sell them products. And they're all about maybe that. And then you have another individual who's entering the program and says, you know, I, I really don't know exactly what it is that I want to do, but the business space is so exciting to me because of what I studied in undergrad, maybe an internship that I had, but I haven't really found my place yet. I, I had an internship and I learned a lot, but didn't really get me excited about my future. I wrote some papers and, and maybe did a project uh, with a group but I'm still finding where I'm going. But I know it's business related was, is what I wanna do. I wanna be in the for-profit sector. I don't wanna go off for, for nonprofit. I don't wanna go in public. Uh, the for-profit corporate sector is where I wanna be. And they have a skill set. And sometimes the way we put it, phrase it is they have their compass pointed in the right direction. Um, they don't need to have an exact map, but they've got that compass pointed in that business direction. And so it's a skill set that someone has, a mindset that someone has. And when we put them into the program, 
Uh, they have career coaching from day one. Uh, the Career Management Center is helping them think strategically about their future. And they're very careful at our Career Management Center. They do not place candidates in jobs. Uh, we help you manage your career journey. So we're not going to say, okay, here's three jobs, pick one. It's going to be, okay, let's think strategically about where you want to go and let's teach you the skills so that not only can you land a job coming out of this program, hopefully within six months is, is kind of our goal. For both programs, over 90% of our graduates within six months are employed. But once you are in that first job, let's start just strategically thinking about where you want to be next. You know, maybe it's within that same company, maybe the growth opportunities are there. But if not, let's think strategically about starting to build those connections over time so that you can transition into a new role. And so, yeah, we, we get excited about people who have maybe an internship with a consulting company. Maybe they've interned with, um, you know, BCG or, or Bain or McKinsey or something like that. And that looks great on your resume. And that's enticing as an application reader to look at that and say, wow, this is, this is going to be great because maybe it'll be, uh, um, maybe not easier, but a company looking at an individual coming out of Fuqua with that already on their resume, be like, okay, they kind of get it. They've, they've been in that culture, even if it was only for three months, they know a little bit about it. But at the same time, we're looking for really smart, driven, team-oriented people who maybe haven't worked for a, a big name company or a recognizable thing that a business would look at and say, oh, I know that. But they're able to develop a skill set and a portfolio of experience in our program that positions them well so they're, they're attractive to a company that's looking to hire someone from a, a pre-professional program like ours. So we don't necessarily assume that the student knows nothing, right? So they do have to have completed um, about, so, so the admissions requirements can vary for our master's program, but in general, most students are coming to us with a bachelor's degree, right? So they have some experience in the classroom. They've got some experience expressing themselves, writing things, you know, and, and this type of thing. So we're gonna build off of that base that they've already established. But what we're really looking forward to doing is exposing them to new ideas, to exposing them to what's happening right now now in business. Um, so that's something we do try to convey. We publish our course descriptions on our website so students can kind of get a little taste and see, okay, in this course they're assuming I've got a little bit of a educational background, um, I've got some basic mathematics skills, but beyond that we don't have prerequisites per se. So I think that's the way we can kind of express to, to students that we're not requiring them to come to the table necessarily with a specific uh, knowledge of this database or working in this type of administrative environment, we're going to teach them how to do all of that. Well, my advice is obviously people are at different places in their lives, but if, if you are in college right now, let's say you're entering your senior year and you're thinking about one of these programs, my advice is to apply. The worst that can happen, you're not admitted to the program. Uh, you go and find a job and you can reapply. We have no negative opinion of people who apply to the program or are not admitted and then reapply to the program. And some of our favorite students end up being those who, who don't make it uh, first time. Uh, but they have that uh, desire to be here and they put together a second application and, and they're successful in that. So it's kind of an easy answer for those who are in college. I say, why not? Because uh, you, I think you always increase your chances by casting a wide net. So apply for programs like ours, apply for jobs, and figure out what's going to work best when the results come in. You know, maybe you get some job offer, offers, but it's not exactly what you want, and you get admitted into the program. Great, your path is following the program. Maybe you get an awesome job offer, really, really attractive job offer, and you're admitted to the program, and you say, you know what, I'm gonna take this job offer, and after time, a year or two, I'm gonna maybe decide that I'm gonna go back to a specialized master's program because I'm still really early in my career. And then if someone is in their life right now, they graduated a year or two ago, they're working, and they're just, 
they're just not excited about maybe the opportunities they have because they feel like they're lacking a specific skill. And to be honest, maybe lacking a network because oftentimes what business school is really about the value in it. I would say that if you were to survey, let's say you were to stop 10 uh, alumni of, of any business school program, whether it's a pre-professional master's program or, or an MBA, and ask them, what was the most valuable thing you took away from your business school education? I'd say that more than 50%, the vast majority would say the network that I developed because I can pick up the phone, I can call someone who's an expert in something that I'm not, and I'm going into this negotiation and I need to be able to ask good questions and look like I belong. And so I'm gonna schedule a, a one hour conversation and I want you to give me the nitty gritty on, you know, what do I need to know about these balance sheets that are gonna really um, show people that I know what I'm talking about because I didn't spend all my time crunching numbers in the program, I was dealing with something else. Or it's just these random conversations that you have with people, you're Zooming with them, you're grabbing a drink with them and they say something and you're like, you know what? that's a very attractive opportunity for me and, and you wouldn't have that unless you had that network and so uh, networking is definitely a part of it as well the academic education is, is great but i think very rarely when you run into alumni do they say oh my gosh that accounting class changed my life uh no it's probably you know and this actually this came up recently one of the deans in our school the academic deans uh graduated from Fuqua and he, he painted a very vivid picture for the incoming class because we actually just had orientation last week and and he was telling this exact story he said when you think about your education here definitely do well in class but it's not all about your coursework and to give you an idea of this he showed a picture of himself at orientation with a group of people and there were like maybe 30 people in the picture and he had, I think, six or seven of them with a circle around their face. And he said, I want you to pay attention to these six or seven people. And then he showed a picture of the next slide of his wedding. Those six or seven people were in his wedding. And he said, basically, these people became my family. And they are the ones I turn to in times of trouble, in times of happiness, uh, if we do group vacations. The, the value of the relationships that you develop in any program uh, really can't be undervalued. And I think it was a very a vivid picture saying, okay, you're here to get an education and we want you to do well. But at the same time, we want you to develop relationships in a network because that is really something that's going to be enduring over time for sure. I get this question a lot, actually, because our, a lot of our bachelor students will come and approach me about, hey, should I just go straight into a master? Should I look to get some work experience? Um, my advice to them is usually if they're feeling a bit like they don't know exactly what they want to do, if they're not ready to really deep dive, as you said, if they're not really ready to specialize at that level, this is usually where I recommend an internship or some type of work experience. If only just to narrow down the field a little bit, get a little bit of a taste of what's out there. And then the student can come back and say, hey, this is something that, you know, while I was working, I got really interested in, in um, investing or global banking, for example. And then that allows them to complete their education. Um, so I do, I do recommend that for the student who seems a little bit unsure. But what's great about a lot of bachelor programs these days is they've become really specialized as well. So we're seeing a lot of students come to us with no work experience, but they want to continue on that specialization path. They're ready to, to gain those technical skills and that and that really special experience. Uh, so um, for those students, my advice is always is always to go for it. Um, the last piece of advice I'd have just for in my putting on my admissions hat um, is I really encourage students to think really hard about application essays. I know we we sometimes think, oh yes, another essay, but for me, it really allows me to get to know the student on a more personal level. I've seen the grades, I've seen the recommendation letters, but I want to hear the voice of the student. Um, that's really important to me. I want to hear their experiences, personal or professional, that have brought them to this place. And and that's that's always my piece of advice. Don't don't let the essay be a throwaway. Really, really take that advantage of that time you have to to define your voice and and speak to me outside of your grades, let's say. Great 
question. Um, I would say in Europe, uh, with uh, the, the advent of this one-year master program, whereas in the U.S. you would traditionally find more of a two-year type program, we're moving a bit more towards practical, hands-on. Uh, we're teaching a little bit less business theory, for example, in our master courses, and we're trying to cut right to the chase, so to speak, in terms of teaching skills, doing business simulations, using real world examples. Uh, for example, sometimes for one of our master terms, uh, we'll have students follow a very specific business case, maybe a marketing case, uh, really from A to Z. So it's a very, it's, it's a little bit more of a hands-on approach, uh, which I know you have in the United States as well, but I would say we're looking to kind of zero in on that even more. I think another advantage of, of studying in Europe and especially at EU Business School is just the diversity. Um, I know that that many American universities are welcoming students from all over the world, but that's our base. We don't really have an, an enormous homegrown population, if you will, in our university. So you're walking into that classroom and you're immediately gonna be surrounded by students from many different countries, backgrounds, cultures. There's, there's, you know, we teach all our programs in English because we have to have that common language for everyone. Um, otherwise there'd be, you know, conversations in 10 different languages going on. Uh, so I, I think you find a little bit more of that in Europe. I think we've got, you know, the countries closer together. We've, we've got these diaspora communities and I really think students are opening themselves up to a, to a vast, like div diverse cultural experience studying here. I'll be honest and say up front, money. <laughs> American education is known for being very expensive. I will say that we do have uh, scholarship programs for students uh, that are based on merit. And so the, there's two kinds of financial aid uh, in U.S. schools, uh, merit-based and need-based. And so need obviously it goes to those who have the ability to demonstrate they have the most financial need, whereas merit is you are the most meritorious candidate, the most attractive to the admissions committee, and we're going to give you money based on that. And we're a merit-based system. Um, I guess anywhere you choose to go, you're going to get a great education. And you could make an argument that geographically, where you would like to work is a good place to go to school, which, which can make sense. If you would like to work in London or Spain, or sorry, London or, or Madrid or Berlin, you know, something like that, you could make a case for saying, okay, I want to go to a school in Europe because I just want to have easy access to that. But I will say that many of the students in our program, for example, are doing internships or group projects with companies that are global or that are located in other cities. One of the unique things about Fuqua as well, I will say, is that we operate on a six week term schedule. So you have a six week term and then a break, six week term and a break, six week term and a break. And part of the philosophy of that is that business, typically projects you're involved in are not 15 weeks a semester long. They're oftentimes shorter, a couple of weeks. Um, and so we think that philosophically, if, and, and pragmatically, if we get you into a class and get you through it in six weeks, it's really, it's helping you develop the mentality that you're probably going to face in the workplace. And so one thing that maybe sets us apart, even from our American counterparts, is the philosophy of the six week term. It's not very common. Most schools operate on either a semester or a quarter system, whereas we're on a six week term system. Um, but I would also say that American schools, we have very international populations. We have a tendency to attract people from a lot of different countries. It's not uncommon for there to be like 25 different citizenships represented within one of our programs. Uh, having access to the U.S. Uh, internship market as well. I will say good news for many people out there. All of the programs at Fuqua are now STEM certified. So if you want to go for OPT, which allows you to stay in the U.S. and work for a few years, uh, all of our programs allow for that. It used to be that the MMS program did not have that designation, but it now does. And so for individuals who are particularly interested in testing the American job market and seeing if they want to remain here, that OPT, STEM OPT option is there for everyone.